Hey guys, Alan here. So me, James, and Otab just finished uh, pre-lighting for a big shoot tomorrow, and I figured, well, this is a really cool looking setup. Might as well use it as a background for a review I've wanted to do for a long time now. I've had this lens, this is the uh, Mitocon 35mm f0.95. You can get this for um, several mirrorless cameras, including Sony's E, uh, Canon M, and also Fuji's mirrorless cameras. First, I want to talk about the build of this lens. It's extremely sturdy. It's all metal, um, very solid, and it has an extremely smooth ring. I mean, this is so buttery and so nice compared to most still camera lenses, right? Of course, this is an all manual lens, so also we have a de-clicked uh, manual iris ring, which is also very smooth and nice. Um, so everything about this lens just screams quality, despite the fact that it is made in China. You, you just want to expect this from a lens from China. Um, let's get more into the details now about this lens. So this is a f0.95 lens. It is super, super wide open um, for crop lenses. I think it's the widest available right now for crop lenses. Uh, the equivalent for a 35 millimeter uh, for this is kind of a 1.4, so it's not as quite as shallow as Mitocon's 50 millimeter 0.95, which is just crazy crazy but this really does the job as far as crop sensors you're not going to get anything as wide open that allows as much light in and gives you that really 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 nice soft bokeh this is the second version of the Mitocon 35 millimeter this is the mark ii so it's a little bit shorter and it's a lot sharper uh, especially wide open so this is completely usable at f 0.95 your center is going to be sharp and you know you, of course your edges are going to be a bit blurry but it's it's not to the point where it's noticeable and uh, it's really not that distracting especially if you're using a lens like this for video which is uh, what I do if you're you know doing um, higher end photography maybe you want to think about it there is a little bit softness wide open but for what it is remember guys 0.95 it's extremely sharp in my opinion uh, one of the problems you're going to see in this lens that you'll probably see in also the 50 millimeter 0.95 uh, to a worse extent is there is chromatic abrasion, especially when you're shooting backlit subjects, very fine like tree branches or the outlines of people. You're going to see chromatic abrasion. And for that, of course, photography, it's, it's really easy to fix that. You can just pop it into Photoshop. For video, it could be a deal breaker for certain people. Of course, if you close it down to around like, you know, F4 or f2.8, you're gonna get rid of that chromatic abrasion, but you know, you don't really use this lens for f2.8. Again, you use it for f0.95. Um, so I primarily paired this lens with my a6300, which is kind of like my uh, walk around camera. It's the camera I like to use when I'm vlogging and you know, just doing personal stuff. And I gotta tell you, it's completely changed how I shoot and it really allows me to carry no lights in almost every situation. I'm able to use ambient lighting and even like my iPhone to basically light subjects and it works because I can shoot with this at f0.95 and maybe put the a6300 around 1000 ISO and I basically have enough light for most situations except if I'm pitch black. Now because this is a manual lens for, for those out there who, who are doing maybe live events um, you know, even things like weddings, uh, news gathering, for instance, this is this might not be the lens for you because it is completely manual. Now, if you never shot with a manual lens, that just means everything is out. There's no electronic signal to the camera. There's no AF, no uh, image or optical stabilization. There's uh, no autofocus. Um, the aperture blades are even controlled by a ring. So essentially, you have a dumb lens. A dumb lens that looks really, really beautiful, of course. I have shot live events with this, but um, just for fun. I wouldn't do it on a professional job, probably, because you're going to get a really low percentage of usable I'm shots. Have, I mean, uh, problems getting sharp images. You're going to have a lot of soft uh, images if you're shooting at 0 0.95. Of course, y you can go up to 2.8 or f4, but there's no reason to really use this uh, so uh, with the aperture so closed. Now, one of the things I do definitely recommend if you're using this for a live shoot, or even if you're using it uh, for a um, you know setup shot inside of a studio, I would really recommend you use a uh, peaking feature on your camera and also uh, a really nice high-resolution monitor because you really have to kind of pixel peak with this. 
you, you never really know what is quite in focus. I mean, your nose is gonna be in focus, but your ears are gonna be completely blurred out some, in some situations. So you're definitely going to need a ND filter for this lens if you're doing video. Um, it is a must because 0.95 is great at nighttime, but during the day, you're basically just gonna get a white screen. Your camera's just not gonna be able to handle it. So um, I, I, I paired this with a variable ND. This is the uh, Hoya, um, just a Hoya variable ND. I did some research. It seems like the Hoya has better color rendition than the Tiffin ones and I don't know who else. I think black and white makes some. Yeah, and it's also reasonably priced, but this is a, a pretty good uh, ND filter. I pair it with, it, it stays on. This ND filter basically stays on this lens, uh, you know, whenever I'm outside. Uh, yeah, if you want, if you really want to shoot at you know 50, 60 shutter rate, I definitely recommend you get something like this. You might need something even more than a. Um... Now, now the reason I got this lens was because I wanted something for low light, low production kind of shoots. I probably wouldn't use this lens in a shoot like I have set up here. But you know, when I'm just shooting by myself or doing street photography, this lens gives me so much flexibility. Uh, the second reason I bought this lens is because I really wanted um, a unique look to my photos and videography. You know, everyone's using Zeiss or Canon or Sony lenses nowadays, and those are great. There's a lot of great lenses, but this one looks unique. When you look at the photos and videos that come out of this lens, you can tell that this is completely different from those lenses. It has a very nice, soft, and creamy look, and the color rendition. And also the bokeh is just out of the world. I, I really do like it a lot. And the more I shoot with it, the more I've been getting used to it. Um, what it's not for though, guys, is this is not the most practical lens to use. I mean, I've thrown this on like a FS7 and used it on some larger bodies, but you really don't want to use this for any kind of running gun, you know, situations. It's just without the uh, electronic signal to the camera, being a manual lens, this is definitely not something I'd use. But but you know, if, if you're shooting a wedding, for instance, and you have time to set up, this is this could be really good for weddings um, and stuff of that nature. But if you're trying to get the ceremony, maybe it's not a great idea to have a manual lens. Again, it's all about the shooter though. If you're really comfortable prime lenses and this is what you shoot with on a day-to-day -day basis, well, you might really like this. One more thing, I, I um, the first Mitocon lens I shot with was actually the 50 millimeters f0.95, and that is for full censored bodies. And um, just to compare it quickly, I mean, it has a lot more low light capabilities, and you know, it's a true f0.95, right? It's designed for full frame. This, on the other hand, um, is for crop, so you have to convert this to 35 millimeter, and it's no longer f0.95. When you do that, it's f1.4. So a true f0.95 uh, 50 millimeter, like the Mitocon uh, 50 millimeter, is just the shallow depth of field is out of the world. You, you just get really kind of almost bizarre tilt shift looking photos, which I, which I love. I mean, I just think it looks great. It really allows you to kind of focus the viewer's attention on what you want uh, to be seen. Now, that lens though, that 50 millimeter had much worse um, chromatic abrasion and much softer um, corners than this 35 millimeter 0.95, which is also the Mark II. So if you're looking for the crazy performance of the 50 millimeter 0.95, you're not gonna get it here. But what you're gonna get is a slightly more usable lens than that one. Uh, so guys, I'm gonna leave you off with uh, some just videos that I've shot you know, recently with this uh, lens. I've had it for about like a month now. Hey guys, welcome back, sir. So we are on another food adventure. Oh my gosh, this is my favorite type of video to shoot. Yeah, because we get to eat. So today we're actually so guys, that's all I got for you today. I hope you enjoyed this video, and uh, please don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Okay guys, Maya is coming home tomorrow, and it makes me feel... <laughs>